I had my back to the door and was reading a children's bedtime story to my almost asleep son when I heard from behind me my dad's voice calling my name. It startled me as we were home alone. I turned around quickly to see my dad just rounding the corner heading down the stairs. I only saw the back of him, and only for a split second, but I knew it was him. I called out to him, but he didn't answer. I got up and quickly followed him, and as I rounded the corner to the stairs, I saw him in a side profile just turning the corner at the bottom of the stairs into the kitchen. I called out to him again, but still no answer. I was so confused. I headed quickly down the stairs to catch up to him, but as I rounded the corner into the kitchen, in an almost run at this point, he wasn't there. I ran through the kitchen into the living room, but the house was empty, totally quiet. Now I was more than confused. I checked the entire house, and I checked the front and back doors, which were both still locked up tight. I called my dad on the phone, and he answered straight away, and he was at home, four miles away, and hadn't left all evening. I was fully awake, I hadn't been drinking, and have never taken any mind-altering drugs. I have carbon monoxide alarms in the house, which I test weekly, so it's not that. I have no explanation for this. Can anyone help? To preface, I'm non-religious and usually don't believe in supernatural or unexplainable events. I'm a very logical person and my whole family knows this about me. So it was August 2020 and I was going to the supermarket with my mother. It's close, so we were only there for a bit. We were on the usual way back home, we'd probably drive through here four to five times a week before COVID, when out of the corner of my eye, I noticed something strange. A floating branch in midair? <laughs> There's no way. So I asked my mom if she saw what I saw. No, she was focused on driving. So I told her that, I swear, I just saw a floating branch. She was weirded out by me saying this since, like I said earlier, I don't really believe this stuff and I never really try to play pranks on people. As she saw how serious I was, I told her to turn back so we could see it again, and this time I would record. She gets back on the parkway and makes her way to the same route back home. That's when the video starts. As we were driving, we thought it was gone or had fallen, but I was able to catch the floating branch on video. After that, me and her tried to reason as to how it was just there. A spider web? Maybe a wire that was reflected by the light? We couldn't think of anything. We showed it to my sister and dad, and they had no idea what it could have been. When we checked the same area the next day, it was gone. I played this video back a couple times now, and I'm still really stumped. My best guess is that there was some sort of a telephone wire or something that was hanging way up there, but I still find that kind of hard to believe. If you zoom in while they're passing by the branch, they even go in front of the sun and everything, and there's no wire visible. This happened around five years ago. My niece had just turned six, and my brother asked me to allow him to throw her a birthday party at my house as his apartment was too small. Okay, no problem. House is all yours for the day. Party lasts a few hours, just a regular one with cake and presents. Anyways, we cleaned up and everyone leaves. Five minutes later, someone rings my doorbell. I go open the door, and it's my niece. I asked her, what are you still doing here? Why didn't you leave with your parents? She answers, they forgot me, uncle. I'm hungry. Can I come inside and get more cake? Sure, kid. Whatever. It's your birthday, after all. I cut her a slice of the leftover cake and left her to eat it by the kitchen while I go to call my brother. I asked him, why did you leave Rose behind? His answer made my heart skip a beat and my stomach drop. He said, what are you talking about? She's right next to me. I went to the kitchen and no one was there, just a half-eaten slice of cake. Nothing paranormal happened since, but that day will stay with me forever. My girlfriend, a couple friends, and I visited this abandoned old amphitheater in upstate New York, near a mostly empty old mining town. It was supposedly haunted after like five murders happened there in the 50s. People had told us that if we wanted a real experience, that we should go there. So we did. 
It was a cold night in the fall, and it took us forever to find it and a while to even find our way inside. We had flashlights and those disposable 35mm cameras. The super f part was when my buddy's girlfriend screamed. She said something grabbed her. She was absolutely inconsolable, so we bounced. In the car, she insisted that we look at the back of her arm, and there was a bite mark. Not some little thing, guys, like upper and lower teeth, red and bruised. It looked like a small game trap had closed on her arm. We took probably a hundred pictures in there, and the guy at the Walmart development place said none of the rolls came out, like they had been exposed to light. That night changed how I feel about that shit. This is something that my parents experienced back in the late 90s. I was maybe a year or two old at the time, and we'd just moved into a new house. My parents say that the two of them were both up at around 2am, which is pretty abnormal for them, and were standing in the kitchen just talking. Just around when they both decided it was time to head up to bed, my parents both heard this low, deafening boom, and then right after, out of nowhere, my mom and dad both described the floor as having dropped four feet below them in an instant. After they both fell to the ground, my dad rushed to the window to look outside, thinking this was the start of the apocalypse, but everything looked completely normal. My mom went upstairs to check on me, but I was still sound asleep. Nothing had woken me, nothing had fallen over, the house was silent, everything seemed fine. But my parents know what they saw and heard. My mom has tried to rationalize this as something like a dream that the both of them shared somehow, but... They both agree that they remember being up at that time and feeling the floor drop out from under them. Talking about it still freaks both of them out to this day. Now personally, these are the kinds of stories that freak me out the most. I don't really get too scared by your typical ghost stories or anything like that. It's more just these super unexplainable stories that just make no fucking sense. Like, imagine you're standing in your kitchen, and all of a sudden, it's like the world drops down by four feet, and you just come crashing down onto the floor. What's even crazier is, again, this wasn't just one person. They both experienced this at the exact same time, in the exact same spot. This happened in 2010. Still to this day, my friends and I get chills talking about it. About five or six of us were in the back of my buddy's F-150 and pulled into a random spot off of some backwoods in Ozark, Arkansas. I'm talking population of like 1,500 people. I just recently moved there from a big city and didn't know much about animals at age 16. About 15 minutes after us being in these random ass woods, I saw a set of eyes staring at us. Not knowing much, I just thought it was an animal or something in the woods. Like an owl because it was about 10 or 12 feet in the air. But it didn't blink. After about a good 30 seconds or so of this thing not blinking and me slowly focusing in on it, I noticed it didn't have pupils either. Still not freaking out yet, I point through the laughs and conversation at the thing looking at us. I'm laughing too, like, what is that? They have all lived there for a long time or all of their lives, so I figured one of them would know. Dead silence. Nothing. I mean, there is not a single sound. No lights are on, so it's pitch black out there. These eyes were glowing yellow and not moving and not blinking. A good 10 seconds go by, which felt like 10 minutes. I swear on my life, this thing went from being maybe 50 to 60 feet away to 15 feet away behind a tree in less than a second. My buddy threw some salsa that we were munching on at it and... Instantly, we all freaked out. It fucking teleported instantly. It didn't make a sound. We all saw that sh and there was no explanation. As a child, I was very close to my aunt because of how much time we spent over at her house growing up while my parents were busy with work. I am a skeptic and have always been a skeptic, but... She was a more spiritual person and would often tell me personal stories or anecdotes relating to her experiences. One story I remember most vividly and later verified as much as possible with my mother was about my aunt's best friend who had at one point become pregnant 
seemingly miraculously, as she had been trying for quite a while, but it had seemed hopeless. For the months leading up to the birth, my aunt had this uneasy feeling that something was going to go wrong, but she didn't say anything to her friend because she didn't want to upset her. For multiple nights in a row, I believe it was three consecutive nights, my aunt had a terrible nightmare wherein a young man knocked on her door in the middle of the night and, when she answered it, she saw that the man was completely engulfed in flames, features unidentifiable because of them. On the final night she had the dream, the man spoke to her before she woke up. Tell, friend, that it's not her fault. She was awoken by her then-husband telling her that her friend had gone into premature labor and was in the hospital, and she rushed there. Unfortunately, the baby boy died shortly after he was born due to complications from being premature, but what my aunt remembers most is overhearing two of the nurses talking amongst themselves when they thought she couldn't hear, discussing some sort of skin condition the baby had had. One of them said, He must have felt like he was on fire. I don't remember if she ever told her friend about the dreams. I know all of this has a reasonable and logical explanation. She was just worried about her friend, which led to the nightmares. But a part of me can't help but hope that maybe she did have some kind of gift. Because about a year and a half ago, I had a dream about my aunt unexpectedly after not speaking to her for some time. We had grown apart because she was very religious and I'm part of the LGBT community, but in the dream, I overheard her in my home, apparently having come to visit and speaking to someone. I assumed in the dream it was my mom. I hope my name knows I still love them and always will love them. I awoke feeling like maybe I should try and reach out and reconnect with my aunt and that maybe it was still possible for us to not have to be distant because of my identity and her beliefs. I found out later that day that the night before, my aunt had been rushed to the hospital due to an aneurysm. Though she was still technically alive for about a week after, it was eventually determined that she had been brain dead basically since the aneurysm and she was taken off of life support. I still half hope that maybe there could be something beyond our understanding behind these kinds of dreams because that would mean my aunt did still love me. A few months ago, I was on the bus and a woman came in and sat in front of me, facing away while talking. She kept arguing with herself as if someone was speaking to her. She wasn't wearing any earphones. No one came up to her to tell her to be quiet. I was worried for her since I knew someone who had voices in her head and the woman really seemed to struggle with hers. In my mind, I asked her, are you okay? In a worrying tone as if I was actually asking her the question. She quickly turned around facing me and told me, yes, I'm f***ing okay, can't you see? I kept making eye contact with her and she had no detail in her irises whatsoever. They were a faded black. She turned away and stopped talking and arguing. A few minutes later, she got off the bus. What does this mean? Has anyone else experienced this? About five to six years ago, my family, my dad, stepmom, and brother, all move into a new house. I finally get my own room, and so does my brother. Everything is fine for a few months. One night, I go to bed like normal around 8.30 because at the time, I was in school. For some context, I've had sleep paralysis before, but... This time was different. Usually in sleep paralysis, you can't feel things or move. You can only look around. This time, when I fall asleep, I can feel it kicking in. Usually I would let it do its thing and wake up fine, but again, it felt a little different. I look around and see my bedroom door open, and I figure it was my brother or my dad. I see my mom walk into my room. She's in a nightgown she would always wear. She sits on my bed, holds my hand, and I feel it. I can hear her voice say, Good night, sunshine. She's always called me that. She gets up and walks out. I wake up and see my door open. My mom died 13 years ago. Now, when I first read this one, my jaw, like, fell to the floor at that last line. I really thought that, like the mom had actually come into the room or something, um, but I did not expect that. To the person who sent me this, I just want to say I'm sorry to hear about the loss of your mother. Um, I know this was like 13 years ago now, but hopefully this experience was able to bring you some kind of peace. So before I get into this, I need to throw a disclaimer out there that I was 18 years old when this event took place. I have never done hard drugs in my life. 
Also, there were three other teenagers with me that night who were also sober and witnessed this as well. So my friend and I were hanging out with two of her guy friends Friday night after school, and the plans were that we were going to have a sleepover at my friend's house. We were just hanging out, nothing much to do in a small Georgia town but walk around the square and go to the trails. So after shooting the sh for a couple of hours, we got hungry and ordered a pizza for pickup. We got the pizza and drove to a pretty quiet neighborhood where one of the guys lived. The neighborhood was kind of tucked away into a forest, so it was really quiet and really dark in that area of town. As we were sitting there outside, eating pizza, using the hood of the car as a makeshift table, I looked up and saw what looked like a large, pitch-black mass that resembled a primate in shape and movement, swinging high in the trees that looked to be a good 800 feet away from us. Even from that distance, in the night, it looked... huge. This made no sense, as we live in a small town in Georgia. There are no large primates here. I alerted everyone to this figure in the trees, and we were all baffled and amazed at what we were seeing. Then, it seemed like it noticed us. We couldn't see any distinct features, and the figure was pitch black, but somehow you just knew that it was watching you. Suddenly, this shadow ape-like figure stood tall, and you could almost see it shifting before your eyes as it began to resemble more closely the shape of a large man holding onto a branch with one arm just staring at us with unseen eyes. Everyone was frozen, so still and quiet. It seemed like the sounds of the night froze in place with us. We were just transfixed on this dark figure in the trees. Then, this creature crouched over, and as it did, its shoulders seemed to stretch impossibly higher, reaching over its head. All of us were in shock and terrified at seeing this, maybe a little in denial as what we were seeing was defying any logical explanation. And then this creature's shoulders, for lack of a better word or better way to explain this, seemed to just grow into these huge wings, and then this dark figure jumped off the branch and flew off. I knew what I was seeing was real because when it happened, we all ran to the car without talking and sped away from there. We were all freaking out, trying to find any logical reason that could explain what we had just witnessed. But obviously, there was none. This happened like an hour ago, so I'm still pretty shaken. I went to turn on the light in my bedroom so I could do some cleaning, and the light switch shocked me and made a crackling noise. The lights went on for a second, and then there was the sound of glass breaking, and the room went dark. Obviously, my first instinct was to get all the glass shards off myself and get out of the room. I bandaged a few spots where the shards had cut me and went back to the room to inspect the damage. The light is working fine now, and I start to clean up, but when I check the ceiling... Every light bulb in the room was intact. I even felt for cracks, and all of them are pristine. I know I didn't hallucinate it because I just spent 45 minutes cleaning glass shards off everything, but I have no idea where they came from or what the hell happened. I had an experience a couple months ago. It's brief. My house has two floors and one set of stairs. Only one way up and down. I have one dog. A beagle. She's not even a year old. I walk into the living room upstairs to grab my wallet, and I see her on the couch next to my son's car seat. I lean forward to see if she's chewing on the little toy that hangs from the handle, and she's not. I head downstairs to where my bedroom is. I go down and walk over to my bed, and... There is my dog again, laying in my spot, looking at me. I physically got chills all over my body and froze. I had just seen her not 45 seconds earlier on the couch. There is no way she got down here before I did because there's only one way down, which I took. I run through it over and over in my head trying to think of what just happened, and I simply do not know. This happened back in college when I was visiting home for the Christmas holidays. One evening, after dinner, my parents decided they'd go for a short walk. I had a paper to finish, so I stayed home. I was sitting in the living room with my laptop while my cat sat across the room, just dozing in the window, facing the driveway. It was cold and dark out, and snowing too, so I figured they wouldn't go far. 
Sure enough, after only 10 to 15 minutes, I hear footsteps crunching in the snow. I looked up, saw my cat stretch and give a little welcoming trill, clearly tracking some movement outside. I then heard the door unlock, jackets unzipping and boots stomping on the floor, as though to get rid of excess snow. No one was talking, but I assumed it was my parents, so I turned back to my paper. However, after a minute or so, I realized they weren't coming inside. I thought it was odd, so I called out, Hello? No answer. I went out into the hall to see what was up, and no one was there. My parents' boots and jackets were still gone, the door was still locked, and no one had tracked any snow inside. I was on my way back to the living room when I suddenly heard the same noises of the door unlocking, except this time I heard my parents talking, and then they entered the house for real. I normally would have chalked it up to my brain making it all up, that I'd already formed an expectation simply because I assumed my parents would be back soon, but it was just strange that my cat also reacted so clearly. For context, I grew up in a very abusive home. My father is a drug addict and physically and emotionally abusive. He's no longer in my life, and I often tell people he's dead to avoid questions about him. Up until I was 16, I would skip sleep for days because of my parents arguing and fear that my mother would get hurt or killed. I never questioned if they were getting along or not because they were fighting 24-7. Like I said, my father is out of the picture and my mother is doing much better. She has a boyfriend that I like and treats her well. That being said, they do have the normal arguments that all couples have. I'm in college now and spend Monday through Friday there and then come home for the weekends because I hate where I live. I call my mom almost every day to talk and it's mostly normal. Me complaining about roommates in school and her complaining about her job. However, there is this weird thing I do where I can sense when they're arguing. A couple weeks ago, I wanted to FaceTime them both, but I called my mom first to ask if they were arguing because then it would be weird to do so. My mom was confused. She hadn't mentioned anything to me about the fact that they were arguing and did not understand how I knew it. It creeps her out a lot because I do it every time they argue. I'm not nosy, I don't go through her phone, and she tries to keep her arguments between them and not have me knowing about them because of our past. I don't even know how I know. I typically don't even think about it when I ask her, it just comes out of my mouth. I've been so accurate that I just ask her why they're arguing instead of if they are. I do want to note that they do not argue often, they've just been together for three years. I don't know if this is just a skill I picked up from my past or something else. I don't believe in mediums or anything like that, but it really freaks everyone out. This one in particular interests me because it reminds me of that sort of familial instinct you hear a lot about. Like we've all kind of heard of the idea that like a mother can sort of sense when something is wrong with their child and just kind of similar things like that. What do you guys think about this sort of strange ability? Like, do you think people maybe just express these sort of subconscious tells that sort of let people know when they're going through certain things? I don't know. Maybe there really is some sort of a spiritual connection there, but obviously it's hard to say for sure. Now this next one is similar to the last one, but with a little bit more of a paranormal influence. My mother told me about a strange event that happened to her when I was a baby. We lived in a basement of a house at the time. I had no cradle for me to sleep in, so my mother had me sleep with her on the bed. One night, she told me I managed to roll underneath her while we were both asleep, and I was suffocating, and she didn't know. Suddenly, she said something slapped her foot so hard that it awoke her. She realized I was underneath her, and she pulled me out and checked me. I was okay. She still can't explain it to this day, and thanks whoever or whatever it was that woke her up to save me. Could have been anything, a guardian angel or some past relative who was watching over us. Or it could have been one of the spirits of the dead old couple that used to live in the same house a while ago. Who knows, but all that I know is that I could have died that day and I wouldn't be here. It's nothing too crazy, but after hearing it straight from my mother, it really changed how I see things ever since. She still mentions the story to this day. I was walking into my parents' house through their deck door, and my reflection was me, but not. Hair was different, clothes were different, I looked like I'd been crying. I had made eye contact with the not reflection, and she stared back. 
I had all my mirrors covered for at least a month afterwards. For context, my next door neighbor grew up in the house he lives in today. He rented it from his parents in his early 20s and has since gotten married and purchased the house from them. I moved into my house about five or six months before my son's second birthday. He's now in high school. After a year or so of moving in, he began talking about this man, an old man. We brushed it off at first as he was quite young and wasn't speaking in full sentences at this stage. However, it did strike me as unsettling, even if it was an imaginary friend. Why an old man? As he got a bit older, he began telling us about the man in more detail. He referred to him as the man in his wardrobe, or closet, we aren't American. The wardrobe he was referring to was a built-in wardrobe that had been put in just before we had moved in. Previously, it was just another bare wall. My partner asked our neighbor about the previous people who owned the house. He knew the husband had passed away some years earlier. Our neighbor told him that he had not died in the house, which convinced us that our son just had an imaginary friend, albeit a strange one. Fast forward a few years, our kids were invited to one of their kids' birthday parties. I had to work, so my partner went with them. Somehow the topic came up about the people who had previously owned our house. Our neighbor, like before, had said something about the husband passing away in a hospital or something to that effect. When his dad, who had known the man quite well, said, no, he died in the house. He had been in the spare room for quite a while as he was ill for months. The spare room he was referring to is my son's room. Okay, this one is less creepy and more so just really confusing. Um, if you guys have any theories on this, obviously drop them down below. Um, but I, I really have no idea what this could have been. I got moved to a new school when I was younger. One of my first friends there was named Gracie, and she had very distinct features and behaviors. I remember one day I had her over to my house, and she was really rude to my mom and brother. My mom told me that I wasn't allowed to have her back over since she had been a jerk to my sibling. Our friendship fell off after that, and I remember she didn't come back to school the next year. In sixth grade, I had moved to middle school, and Gracie was back. She had glasses now, but I still recognized her. Except when I went up to her and said, Hey Gracie, remember me? She had no clue who I was, and called herself Olivia instead. This was weird because we knew each other for years in elementary school, and I remembered her very well. I thought initially she just didn't want to be around me because I'd cut off our friendship, but she hung around me like her usual self did all those years ago. She acted really weird when I brought up that I remembered her as Gracie and insisted she was a different person. She even had the same mom as Gracie. It could be written off as me just misremembering things, but... My mom and brother still bring up the girl who pretended she wasn't Gracie. I eventually got to invite Olivia to my birthday party that year, and she was just as rude to my mom and sibling as she was years ago. They even remember her as the same girl. My mom even insisted that she already banned her from the house once. We had some theories that it might be the witness protection program or something, but why would they send her to the same school district she used to be in? Why would they not relocate entirely? Maybe she just changed her name and forgot me, but why did she get so defensive when I brought up her old identity? Just strange. One normal morning, my teenage daughters and I were getting ready for school and work with the usual buzz of three women grooming and prepping for the day. Youngest daughter comes flying out of her room in furious frustration. Who took my purple beanie and then put it back? Cue confused and offended reactions from her sister and I. No one has been anywhere near your room. We've both been in the bathroom doing our makeup and hair. What's going on? My youngest basically accused us of taking her beanie after she left it on her backpack. Then, after she tore her room apart trying to find it, turned around and it was on her bed, neatly folded. I said, you probably just misplaced it or misremembered where you left it. No biggie. With great emotion and conviction, she insisted that was not what happened and that we should just admit that we were messing with her. Well... Her sister and I were very dismissive because we knew full well we'd both been in the bathroom chatting for the last 30 minutes doing our girly stuff. For sure, she just forgot that she put it on her bed, right? On the drive to school half an hour later, she had calmed down and asked us again if we'd moved it. I was getting a little frustrated and said no. We didn't move it. We didn't go near your room. Why is that so hard to believe? Why is it impossible that you just misremembered? 
She gave me the withering look only a 15-year-old girl can give and said archly with a steely voice, When have I ever folded anything, Mom? She's got me there, but, you know, whatever, things happen. The mystery was not resolved, and to be honest, her sister and I paid very little attention to this drama that seemed so out of place and overacted. A few days later, Every night when I hop into bed, I take out my pearl and diamond drop earrings and place them under one of my pillows. Always the same one, in exactly the same place. Have done it for years and years and years. So this particular night, I jump into bed, take off my earrings, and slide them under the pillow like I always do. At 6 a.m., I wake up, check my phone, then slide my hand under the pillow to put on my earrings. No earrings. I think they've fallen behind the bed, so I get up, pull out the bed. Not there. I strip the bed. I strip the linen off the pillows. I take the doona out of the cover. I take the mattress cover off. I get on my hands and knees and cover the floor. No earrings. I'm frantic and confused. The girls are up and about by now, so I ask them, did someone take my earrings? Sleepy dismissive denials as they went about their routines. I'm almost in tears and insist someone has moved them. They insist they have no idea what I'm on about. So, I remake the bed, shaking everything out and feeling every nook and cranny in the room. I'm devastated. These earrings were so special to me, and I just can't believe they simply disappeared. I spend the day confused and upset. I get home, cook dinner, have a bath, etc., etc. It's now bedtime, and I jump into bed. How could they have moved when I put them exactly where I always do? As I'm saying this to myself, I slide my hand under the pillow I always put them under, and there they were, exactly where I always put them. I'm gobsmacked and shook. I fly out of bed and go straight to the girls. Who took my earrings and put them back? My eldest said she had no idea and asked me to be quiet. She was almost asleep. Didn't care enough to be interested. My youngest? She says to me, well, now you know what happened to my beanie. Do you believe me now? I just have no explanation at all. Thank God it was a shared experience with my youngest daughter because no one else believes or even understands just how impossible these two events were. <laughs>